Hi, have you ever heard about personal beauty finance? Well, it's a neologism that I'd like to introduce with this video and is for beauty addicts like me and maybe you. So if you find yourself having overspent over time on beauty products, and if you like everything that is beautiful and you are sensitive to what is bougie related to the beauty, then you are at the right place. And if you feel like me, the necessity to calm down and change your pace with your purchases and identify some strategies in order to have more money for more important things or other necessities or simply for yourself, then this is the right place for you. So I'd like to introduce this concept of personal beauty finance, although it has always been the goal of this channel to appreciate the beauty around us and the beauty products that makes us feel confident and powerful and beautiful, but at the same time being conscious with the purchases and that awareness of overspending and wasting a bit money on beauty products derives from, you know, accountability and revising a bit the past spending. So if you want to change your mindset and have a good resolution for the future and have a, a new future, it's possible. It's a journey that I'm doing myself and I'd like to share it with you. So I would identify three steps for a structured and doable personal beauty finance. First is awareness. You have to be aware of your weaknesses, where you spend most, so that you can counteract the desire. In my case, for example, I used to spend a lot on brushes in the past. This is my latest purchase. Brushes are my weakness as well as eyeshadows. Especially eyeshadows are a weakness because you can't have enough and eyes are what I think is the best part of my face. I feel confident, more graceful <laughs> with eyeshadows on. I always put some eyeshadows. Otherwise, I feel a bit naked. When it happens, my colleagues even said I, I look tired and <laughs> therefore I know that I have to put a little bit. So these are my latest purchases in terms of eyeshadows. But as you know, if you are not new to my channel, I'm an eyeshadow lover. But there are some tips and tricks that I've already been discussing with you, but I'm going to focus on them more in the future to be aware of the beautiful eyeshadows I already have and prevent me to buy more. So awareness by looking at the past, analyzing the spending and be aware of the amount of money spent on those things is important. I We'll talk in the future in other videos about tools that can be used because I'm lazy. For example, I can't keep track on all of my spending with an Excel file. I tried in the past. It was a failure. I admire people that manage to do that, but I need tools, apps that can help me to do that. I will show that in the future. So awareness, the first point. The second point is strategy, being strategic with your purchases choosing the right time that is the best for you. That can be when the prices go down, for example, you're in a sale. It can be also the best time for you not to overspend on other things. For example, when it came to Pat McGrath holiday collection, I prefer to take advantage of the launch sales, even if they are less convenient than later sales. It was the right time purchasing in the beginning, in the first weeks, because otherwise I would have bought more because I had that desire for the original thing. So you have to be strategic. Other strategies can be like the one that I showed you in my previous video when I showed these purchases, placing one beauty order every month, and that keeps the purchases low, maximum 12 beauty purchases per year. So it's a nice rule that for me is superior compared to a total no buy, because I'm not for no buys. I cannot sustain that type of restriction that is detrimental for me and tends to be counterproductive. So instead, I prefer to limit myself and to keep that strategy. So the second point is strategy, but not just strategy, but it's love your strategy. Be critical with the new releases so that you can plan a strategy for your purchases and love that strategy so that you won't change that strategy anymore. 
So we will stay with a small amount of purchases and it's okay if now and then you can purchase two things instead of one. But the most important thing is not to go back in the loop of buying a lot or hoarding a lot of stuff. And finally, the third point is the rewards. With the money that you save, with your strategy that you are loving from the previous point, then you can get yourself a reward. And I'll show you how to reward yourself. How am I doing that currently? In my case, I started a truly personal finance strategy that is based on the money that I saved on beauty. So I plan to make this a series and show you the three points in detail and share with you how I'm trying to make that money that I'm saving profitable by taking care of my personal finance that becomes a personal beauty finance because it's money that I would have wasted on beauty, but I now keep for myself, for recreation, for my mental health and for investing. So this is a great new project that I had in my mind and I've started with a new year and I'm ready now to share with you in the details. So stay with me because I will disclose everything in the coming videos. This has become a necessity for me because since I live in this country, my wage has been reduced at, at the same time. I have other needs that need to be fulfilled and beauty is my passion. I can't do without it, but at the same time, I have to be more strategic. So I think this can be beneficial to many of you. And this is tied into the BOB mindset because the primary necessity was to be conscious of spending towards only what is the best because that is money well spent. It is the opposite of fast fashion and quantity. Trends can be followed with quality and with a curated list of things. If you want to check what I've purchased in the last three months, following this new strategy, then this is the video that you may want to check. See you there. Bye.